What's up, DR? My name is Cam. And I'm Kylie. And this is going to be the last episode of DRTV to send us seniors off. Let's start the show. Sad day for our TV crew. This is the last episode of DRTV with our beloved seniors. Yeah, May 28th is their last day. They seem pretty excited about it. How are you feeling about it? It's bittersweet. It's sad to see them go, but I'm happy to become an upcoming senior. Hopefully next year's a lot less work. Yeah, hopefully. So what's on today's agenda? Today we're going to talk with Nathan Conti, a junior, about becoming seniors. And then we'll have our guests spin the tagging mystery wheel. After this, we're going to sit down with Nathan Conti. See you after the break. You want to keep warm when you're feeling chilled, but you don't want to raise your heating bill. Blankets are okay, but they can slip and slide. And when you need to reach for something, your hands are trapped inside. Now, there's the Snuggie. Hello, welcome back. Today we have Nathan Conti with us, a junior from our TV class. Let's see how he feels about becoming a senior. So Nathan, how's junior year been? Um, it's been all right. It's been a lot of work, but I'm getting through it. It's it's nice being online. I like being at home, you know, have my free space. I mean, I do miss the social aspect of it, but yeah, it's been pretty good, relatable, I guess. Are you excited or sad that it's coming to an ending? I am excited. Um, next year is hopefully going to be a lot less work. Um, it is exciting to be be a senior next year. So, yeah. yeah. Relatable. Yes, I agree. What are you looking forward to as a senior? Um, you know, probably just being one step closer to having independence at college and going to a college that. I want to go to, you know. That's definitely going to be interesting. What's something that you're looking forward to do next year that you couldn't do this year? Um, I'm mainly just excited about being back in person. Um, you know, being able to socialize, talk to people in classes. Couldn't really do that this year, so. Well, thank you for your time today, Nathan. Yeah. Now it's time for everybody's favorite segment. 
Spin that wheel! Whoop whoop! What? Candy! Woo! Here you go, dude. Thanks! Only it's one. Not this one. Yeah. Oh. Okay, thank you. Okay, everybody, that's all the time we have for today. See you next time on the Taggy Show. Bye. bye! Say bye to Steve. Bye, Steve. Bye, Steve. <laughs> what are your plans after high school? So, I am going to Curry College in Milton. I plan on majoring in elementary education. I want to be an English teacher. And Maybe after college, I want to either go back um, and be a high school English teacher, or I might just stay in elementary education. What are your plans after high school? Uh, I'm gonna work for a year and then do community college. My plans after high school are to go to college for about four years. Uh, I mean, I hope four years. I don't know how well it's gonna go. I'm gonna go to Bridgewater State. My plan to go into MTTI trade school to study electrical to become an electrician. I plan on joining the United States Marine Corps. What do you want to do with your life after uh, the Marine Corps? I'm going to become a full-time blacksmith. I'm flying to Pakistan, right? Right. I'm going to the mosque. I'm converting to Islam and becoming one with Allah. Sounds like a plan. Sounds yeah. Like a plan. Endings have been and always will be heartbreaking. Take, for example, the final episode of your favorite TV show. It probably made you cry, or at least want to. Finales can be heart-wrenching and may not always fully answer every question that remains. The show Sweet Life on Deck is a perfect example of a tear-pulling ending. Jailo! The show went on for three years and starred two twin brothers who quite literally went to boarding school. They said they're going to be attending Seven Seas High! They went to school and lived on a boat with their friends and constantly caused mischief always ending up getting in the way of the boat manager, Mr. Mosby. Even though they got under his skin, he was still brought to tears by the final episode when the two boys and their friends graduated. Over the years that Zack and Cody filled at-home television sets, I'm not sure that any of their viewers were prepared for the emotion that would force us to part ways with the twins. The ending of the show BoJack Horseman brings a similar feeling along with it. Episode 15, season 6 of BoJack Horseman, The View from Halfway Down, is by far one of the saddest episodes that I've ever seen in a show. During the episode, Bojack is hallucinating and talking to people who have had important roles in his life and with his mental health. Throughout the episode, he talks to them, finds out things about himself, and says goodbye to them all. And at the end of the episode, he talks to his past friend, Herb Kazaz. I don't think so. It's the way it is, you know. Everything must come to an end. The drip finally stops. See you on the other side. Oh, Bojack, no. At the time, Bojack was being forced to face things that have hurt him most in his life, and eventually, he faces death. At least a metaphor for it. Although this is not the final episode, it sure does feel like one. The actual final episode shows Bojack at a party catching up with all of his friends that he hasn't seen in years, and coming to terms with change, and the life that he now leads. Finally, an equally devastating ending to a beloved children's show Adventure Time. The episode Come Along With Me was the last of 274, and it did not disappoint. There were tears, an epic battle, and sacrifices throughout the episode that made it such a good finale. Although, it was still just that, an end to an adventure. Like all of these shows, endings in real life can be hard. They can make us feel hopeless and like there's nowhere else to go but endings always lead to new beginnings. Finales conclude a show, but they can also lead you to find more shows and new interests. In real life, endings bring new friends, new experiences, and a new you. To all of the seniors graduating this year, in the finale of their high school coming of age shows, just know, this is the start of a new show, one in which you'll grow and change as a person and eventually live happily ever after. You might be feeling sad now, and that's okay because moving on is natural, but your story isn't finished yet. Hello, I'm Tyler, and the seniors are getting ready to leave school and go to college and go on with their lives, so let's see what they have to say about that.
Um, how I feel about leaving high school? Um, honestly, I just want to get out of here. Um, kind of had enough of this place. Kind of sick and tired of it. Um, however, I am gonna miss the most probably my friends that I met here. Um, because I might not see them again, or it might be a while until I see them again, but I think that's what I miss the most. So, leaving high school, I feel nervous and I'm excited about my future. How do I feel about leaving high school? Um, I would say I've wanted to leave for like the past four years. I hated it. Um, but now that we're actually talking about it and it's happening, it's definitely weird. Yeah, I don't, I don't know how to explain it, but I'm still pretty excited. Um, and what am I gonna miss the most? Not the homework and essays I've had to do, but I'll definitely miss seeing my friends and some of the teachers. Honestly, I'm really excited to leave high school. Um, I'm excited to just finally start doing what I've always wanted to do my entire life. And um, I think I'm going to miss... Um, like the work being easy I guess and just like messing around with my friends in class because uh, you can't do that in college so what will I miss about high school um I wouldn't say the people uh the building is kind of already falling apart and has been since I've been here but it's definitely been a unique experience and although I am uh kind of looking forward to uh, move on and go on to college, I am going to, you know, miss this place a little bit. What I'm going to miss about being in high school is like being with all my friends that I've known for so long. Like I'm going to have to go make new friends, which is kind of scary. And I'm going to miss like cheering because I don't really know if I want to do it at Bridgewater because it's just too much. But I'm going to miss like cheering with my friends and like the football games. I already miss those. They're not the same as they were. But um, yeah, that's what I'm going to miss. And what am I doing after high school? I'm going to Bridgewater State. I'm going to major in psychology in hopes of being a child counselor. Thank you everyone for sharing. And I wish you all the best. And I hope you guys have great lives because, you know, I might not see you guys ever again. So are you guys ready to graduate? Yeah, I got all my assignments in and I'm set up to graduate. Yeah, me too. I can't wait for the year to be over with. Yeah, I mean, I did some math last night and I figured out I don't have to do another assignment for the rest of the year and I'll still pass. Are you sure? Yeah, yeah. It, doesn't, it doesn't really sound right. Yeah, man. It's math. It's never wrong. Yeah, but your math's probably off. You've never been known as a math whiz. You should probably check your grades, man. Like now. Fine. I mean... I'll check it, but there, there's no way I'd be in trouble. Alright, I'm in trouble. I need you guys' help. How are we supposed to help? Easy. Basically, you guys are going to help me come up with an excuse. How do we always get roped into this stuff at home? I don't know. It's something to do. I've been staying in basement doing nothing. What are you guys talking about? I'm this. Hey, come on. You guys got to pay attention. I need you here. This is kind of your fault, too, so we don't really have to help you. Don't you guys want me to graduate with you? I don't care. Yeah, whatever, man. Shut up. Come on now. Of course we're gonna help you. Alright, what do you guys got for this one-word haiku? Are you kidding me? It's a one-word haiku. We probably put more effort into an excuse rather than just doing it. You have a clinically diagnosed writer's block. What teacher is gonna believe that? That's ridiculous. That was genius. She bought it. That was just lucky. Alright. What do you guys got for art class? I need to make a color wheel. Just say you're colorblind. How would he have done any word in the class if that's the case? And I'm excused. How? All right, this is the big one here. I have a three-page math test that I never did. What do you guys got? All right, don't shoot this down, but we can hack X2, change my grade, like, Matt, you're computer savvy. You might be able to do something with that, right? 
I mean, I could try, but no guarantees. How's it going? I just broke the firewall, and I got it. Now I just gotta change the grade on that test, and... That's weird. What is it? I mean, it says only a home computer can change the grade, which means that the computer is hardwired to the school. I can't change it. So, like, that's a teacher's computer? Yep. You guys thinking what I'm thinking? No, we are not breaking into this school and getting the computer to change the grade. Oh, I was just gonna give up, but that works too. Let's do this. <laughs> wow, can't believe the back door was unlocked. Yeah, we really just got into school while it was closed. This is such a stupid idea. You came up with it. No, I didn't. Whatever. Her room's right over there. Let's go. Here it is. Yo, why is she in the janitor's closet? Oh, she got relocated because of COVID. But, yeah. Left it unlocked, wow. All right, now just to change that grade to a 75. And, passing. Let's go. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good job. Time to check those final grades. What did you guys get? Graduating. Same. Moment of truth, Kong. Did it work? Let's see. No. You didn't. What? what? Nah, I'm just kidding. Pass it for Oh my <laughs> gosh, you actually got me. Hey guys, this week I am asking seniors about their worst senioritis moments. So, my um, worst senioritis moment is my final research project. We were supposed to f um, turn in our topic, um, and I thought of the topic the class before in criminal justice. First senioritis moment uh, was probably term two because that entire term, if I see, saw like a, an assignment that was just so stupid and ridiculous, I just would not have done it. I would have just left it. So my worst senioritis moment would probably be procrastinating Mr. Booten's uh, re senior research assignment. Did that in 45 minutes, got an 85. Uh, my worst senioritis moment was probably when I wake up at 7 o'clock in the morning and drive to school at, for 7.17. My worst senioritis moments are my entire senior year. I have over 10 absences in every single class. 30 in English, I think. Um, I show up late to school every day. Um, I've slept through all of my online classes. I, I don't do any of my homework. And that's all. When I had an essay due, and then I didn't do it, and then I had another essay, so I had to do two essays in a week. My worst senioritis moment is just not doing my homework and doing it in class, and I also dress like this to school every day. Waking up at 7.15 every morning and running to school. So oh, my worst senioritis moment was actually in this class, doing my uh, year-long project or my capstone. So we started that back in the beginning of the year and we started scripting around November and I just finished scripting yesterday and it's due at the end of May, so. Senior Artists happens to the best of us. Just remember to suck it up and get those last few assignments in. I think it's only when like a lot of people... I did it in front of Dr. Gold. Okay, I'm just gonna do it, but if I get yelled at, I'm really gonna do it Go. I don't know the question. Yes, what's your worst in your eyes moment? We have uh, an interview to do. This moment. Mm. Right now? I'm not supposed to Ready. answer right now. Right now? Go. Hi, Abby. Um. Hi, I'm Kylie. And I'm Brianna, and this is our last DRTV segment together. We're coming together to interview some seniors about their last four years here. Let's see what they have to say. What's your favorite memory at DR so far? Spirit Week. <laughs> playing sports. <laughs> My club in sports. Um, playing softball. Mine's playing field hockey. All the friends I've made. I'm definitely playing sports and hanging out with friends. Freshman step up day. When I met my friends freshman year. Definitely going to Gillette. Uh, all the football games, basketball games, you know, uh, celebrating the game wins in the nest. Spirit week. Right. How do you think you changed from the first day of freshman year till now? Well, I cared a lot about more, you know, how I 
dressed when I came in freshman year. Um, I became an independent person. <laughs> I mean, I've gotten taller, definitely. I got my braces off. <laughs> and I gained 40 pounds. Well, I used to be shy, and now I'm not so shy anymore, and I cut my hair. Um, I think I'm smarter. I got my braces off. I care more about my grades. Definitely um, used to care a lot more about what people think, and now I don't so much. My height, <laughs> maybe my hair too. <laughs> I think I matured a lot. Um, kind of realized uh, like what matters most in life. Are you going to college, and if so, where? Yes, and I'm going to. <laughs> I'm going to Bristol Community. Yes, I'm going to BCC and then transferring to the Fashion and Institute of Technology. Yes, and I'm going to Bridgewater State. Yes, and I'm going to Springfield College. I am going to college for near Roger Williams University. Um, I'm going to the University of Rhode Island. Yes, I'm going to college. I'm going to UMass Amherst. Uh, I'm going to the military, um, either Air Force or Coast Guard. Uh, yes, I'm going to college and I'm going to Merrimack College. I am going to Curry College. Yes, I'm going to Bridgewater State. Is there something you wish you could have changed about the last four years? COVID. Nothing besides not having a pandemic would have been pretty nice. So. Ride more. <laughs> I also kind of wish I joined the football team earlier because I've had a really fun time with that this year. Um, I definitely wish I gained more experiences and got more involved in the school. I wish junior and senior year um, didn't suck, I guess. Our senior year. Definitely our senior year. Senior year. Probably junior year because it was barely anything because of COVID. Um, I wish I didn't have to wear masks. <laughs> yeah, I changed the whole senior year. <laughs> what are you most excited for in your future? Um, to hopefully be a teacher one day. Mm, just go to college. <laughs> uh, to meet new people and hopefully get some new friends. To get more friends, not new friends. I like my friends. Shout out all my friends. <laughs> I'm just ready to see where life takes me. Same. I'm ready to see like it's a new opportunity. I'm ready to go to school for fashion. I am most excited to travel. Um, I'm excited to get out of this place. Uh, being a special education teacher. Literally every single part of it. Meet new people, new experiences. To graduate. Summer. Summer. That's kind of sad to think that we're almost done. I know, but we're on to our next chapter. We hope, hope you enjoyed! <laughs> After a multitude of times of trying to find the right words to say in the best order, I've come to the conclusion that there is no way that this can be phrased that won't sound cliche. High school was an experience that could not be rivaled by anything thus far into my life and possibly not anything to come either, but that remark might only be derived by a person with too little experience to compare their past to a broader future. Well, throughout most of it, I wasn't sure if I would ever look back onto these moments with pride or regret. I've been left with the sentimental feelings in regards to both the good and the bad that has happened. Thus proving now to be an unexpectedly poetic bookend to a story I was never aware of taking place. I have seen many kids either attempt to fully embrace this time in their life or give their best effort to reject it without realizing that even with the single most valiant effort, time remains in motion never ending. It's okay though, because when that happens you learn very quickly how to adapt to the change. You do new things, albeit these things are mundane, but these things leave you with an enigmatic euphoria you will remember for the rest of your life for one simple reason. You did them and you did them on your own. I can remember the first time I rode a bike without training wheels in the same way I can remember the first time I reclined to the top of a mountain and sat in an old ski lift just to watch the sun set. You also meet people and make friends and I guarantee you that most of these friends may never have known you if it weren't for your schooling. It's the last point in your life you are likely to become friends with someone completely different than you in every aspect because you had to. Because there are only so many people there, but if you chose right, then none of them will ever compare to anyone else. They'll become family. These bonds will be strong because although your interests may change, your relationships with them will have been built on a foundation of experiences that will last a lifetime. Leaving those times will be scary because it will be all you have ever known of. I have ever known. 
Still now looking back at those moments, I'm hesitant to say goodbye. But I know there is still much ahead of me and it would be wrong to spend all of my time reminiscing and depriving myself of what may eventually be. But please remember that it be an old friend to me. It's okay. I know it's... You know how saying goodbye brings back old memories. Until we meet again. Until we meet again. Wow, time flies. Time really does fly. It's been real, DR. Thank you guys for watching us grow up from little freshmen to seniors doing bigger things. And good luck to all the upcoming grades uh, and whatever they have to come. This is Cameron. And I'm Kylie. Signing off.